This is a review or an introduction to creating Excel formulas and building an Excel spreadsheet. Lots of spreadsheets actually start only with one number and everything else is generated from that one number and that's the way we're going to do this one. But the process of how we build a spreadsheet is still the same. Enter the labels first, then any known values, build the formats, format the worksheet. So we'll start in cell A1 by entering the title for this spreadsheet, which is Gino's Pizza. Then, underneath on row 2, starting in cell A2, move over so you're in B2 and type January, because we're going to do the first three quarters for this worksheet. So I'm going to go back and select January and use autofill to come out through the months of the first quarter, February and March. And then in cell E2, I want to be able to total the rows, so I'm going to put a total label there. Then starting in A3, we're ready to enter the values for each of the items on a row. So sales in the first one, then expenses. And then under expenses, each individual expense. Materials, you can use the down arrow key or the enter key, or you can click with the mouse to move down. The next one is salaries, followed by rent, and last, utilities. And I'm going to skip a row, um, but not yet. Here, let's do total expenses on this row and then skip a row so that in A11 we're going to put our net profit. We use a lot of white space as well as lines on worksheets to show uh, divisions between different areas because it makes it easier to read. Then the only value that we're going to enter into this worksheet is 10,000 in cell B3. Now, all the rest of the formulas will be based on that particular cell. And I'm going to start up here with the sales formulas, so I'm going to move into cell C3. What I want to do is to increase the sales for February and March by 5% of the previous month. It is a formula, so I have to start with the equal sign, and I could type B3, or I could just point and click on the cell to get the cell reference in there. So I want to multiply B3 by 1.05 because sales we want sales to increase or we want to show an increase of 5%. In essence what this does is multiply the contents of B3 by 100% as well as the 5% so I actually get the 5% increase. Now I'm going to copy that over. And I get C3 times 1.05, which is correct because I want to base March's sales on a 5% increase of February sales. And I actually could put the total in here too because that is an auto sum, so I can come up and click the sum button. Remember, it looks to the left and above for numeric information, so it finds it to the left. It marquees it for me, but it is correct, so I can just press Enter to accept that. Expenses is a label, so I want to start down here in B5 with the actual amount of materials. Materials is 15% of sales. Again, it's a formula, so it starts with an equal sign, and I can type B3 <coughs> and multiply that by the percentage, 0.15. I could put that in as a <coughs> decimal number, or I could just type 15%. Salaries. I'm going to point and click for sales. Salaries is 20% of sales. So in this case, I'll actually type in the 20%. So it's B3 times 20 and the percent symbol, which converts it to a decimal internally. And there is my amount for salaries in January. Now, uh, rent is actually 25% of my sales. So again, it's equal B3 and I can point and click or type, times the amount, the percentage amount, which is 25% or 0.25. And then the last one is utilities. 
which is 10% of my sales. So again, equals, and I can type or click, and it's times, and again, 0.1 or 10%. Either way is correct. And then total expenses, of course, is the sum of my expenses. I can use auto sum to do that, so I can click right up here on the auto sum button. It shows my marquee, which is correct, so I'm going to press enter. And I'm through with that column. Now I'm going to come down to calculate my net percent, which is sales minus total expenses. So in this case, I'm going to type an equal sign, click on sales, type a minus sign, and click on total expenses. Or I could have typed the cell references in. Now I'm ready to copy my formulas. So I'm going to take all of the formulas for my expenses, highlight them all, then use my copy cursor to copy them out through March. Do the same with net profit. I'm going to copy it from B11 out through D11. Now, I could do each of these rows one at a time, but I can also do them all together by highlighting the entire section as well as the column cells that I want the total to show in. So if I click the auto sum now, it's going to total out each of those rows for me <coughs> on the appropriate row. And of course down here I also want a total, so I'm going to click on the total there, and I have it. I want this to be centered, the title to be centered across the worksheet. So I've got to select the entire range where I want it to be centered and then use the Merge and Center tool by clicking it. And then I want both rows A and B as well as my labels in column A. So I'm going to hold down the Control key and select the labels. That's a non-contiguous selection of this area of the worksheet and this area of the worksheet. I want those bolded and I want them to be 12 point. So I'm going to change the point size and then deselect. All of my numbers on this worksheet are actually currency. I could click the dollar sign, but that's a fixed decimal to the far left, and I actually want currency format. So I'm going to use the drop down, choose currency, and I am good with that. Now, I'm not widening any columns yet because I still have a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I want a line under the months and the total here, so I'm going to select the cells B2 through E2, and then click on the line tool, and the bottom border is defaulted there, so when I click, that's the border I'll get. And I also want a line right here under Utilities, so I select B8 through E8, and I could do those both at the same time if I had used the Control key to select, and then I'm going to click on the bottom border tool. Now, the last thing that I want to do is to take the expenses under the label expenses and indent those just a little bit. So I've selected those labels and I can do this several ways. I could go into the alignment dialog, but I do have an increase and decrease indent button here. Here is the increase indent, so I'm going to click it once to bring those over slightly so I can tell that they are expenses. And my worksheet is now complete. The control and the tilde key, the tilde key is right to the left of the one key on the keyboard. If you hold down control and press tilde, you see the formulas displayed. And if you click it again, it brings it back to what we call as displayed. So here's a worksheet where the only value was the first one in B3, and everything else that we created was based on formulas.